He's cleaned more than 450 homes in Singapore since 2006. Not fearing bedbug colonies, no filthy piles of rubbish, Yong Tek Ming has made it his mission to ensure that the elderly, the sick and the physically challenged have decent living conditions. Well, Habitat for Humanity around the world in about 73 countries actually built houses for the poor. Uh, and Singapore is about the only country in the entire Habitat world that doesn't build anything because thanks to the government, you know, public housing is very well taken care of. And so we always have to find a way to... Uh, uh, advocate for the cause of the needy and we discovered almost by chance that there are many elderly who are living in terrible housing condition and so the mission of Habitat is to ensure that every person made in the image and likeness of God get to live uh, like a human being. The Ministry of Social and Family Development reported in Parliament in 2012 that there are 35,000 elderly living alone who are considered vulnerable. That figure is expected to rise to 83,000 by 2030. In his seven years of cleaning homes, Tik Ming has seen the worst of living conditions. Actually, the worst condition we've seen surprisingly is opposite Holland Village, where there are a lot of people having a good time and having uh, expensive restaurants. Uh, somehow there is one uh, one room flat at that place, and the worst case we've seen is an elderly woman who was mentally deranged. And so somehow she lived by herself. And we understand that she survived because the neighbors hung food on her door. And uh, she basically lived like an animal, essentially discharging her waste all over the house. And when we first uh, uh, discovered the house, it was the most shocking thing. And uh, what we needed to do was to not only clean up her house, we also contacted the Institute of Mental Health so that she can be properly taken care of medically. While helping others is always fulfilling, it can sometimes be a thankless job. We actually have house owners who attack the staff before. Uh, I, I remember distinctly one uh, house owner in Bado area. So she had a, a rice cooker that was crawling with cockroaches. And so the, our staff went to remove the rice uh, cooker and brought it downstairs. And the house owner came down with a stick and whacked him and, one, and, and sort of accused him of stealing her things and, and stuff and chased him around and avoid that, you know, and we had to intervene. That was the funniest case. And of course, hoarders were, is another problem. Hoarders, uh, before the volunteers come, you would have to persuade them that the way they live is just not safe, it's a fire hazard, and there are even big bugs uh, affecting the neighbours. But sometimes on the very day itself, the hoarders will change their mind, and they can get violent. Uh, at least they will abuse you verbally and uh, 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 curse at you and what have you. Habitat for Humanity Singapore also organises volunteering projects for corporations that want to do their share of team building and corporate social responsibility. So it's a very... A uh, humbling experience for me because you actually see like uh, the living conditions that some people in Singapore are staying in. It's always a pleasure to be able to help the old ones and um, make sure that they have a very decent living condition. As you can see from the faces of the old folks, I think they are really happy. And Tik Ming agrees that pleasure from helping others is one of the reasons he is still pushing on. I think there are many reasons. Uh, Habitat for Humanity is a faith-based organization, so faith uh, reasoning will be one of them. The other one is really the, uh, the satisfaction you get when you find that you really are able to help people. And uh, the thing that continues to surprise me is that it really doesn't take so much uh, to do something about the lives of people around you.